Welcome to Art Ed Radio, the podcast for art teachers. This show is produced by the Art of Education University, and I'm your host, Tim Bogan. A few months ago, Ray Yang was named as the Director of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion and Special Initiatives at NAEA. And I'm very excited to have them on the podcast today. Now, I was lucky enough to work with Ray uh, when they were with AOEU for a little bit. Um, And Ray has been an art teacher, a dean, an administrator, a museum educator, done PD, um, done outreach, and I'll I'll let them talk about their career uh, a little bit more in just a second. But before I bring them on, uh, I want to tell a quick story that can hopefully inform the conversation just uh, a little bit today. Now, in 2018, uh, NAEA had their national convention in Seattle. Uh, I was there with AOEU. Ray was there because Ray is from Seattle. And we just uh, ran into each other by chance. And we were sitting together during one of those large general sessions. And up on stage, the reps from NAEA were talking about the new Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Task Force that uh, was going to be starting soon. Ray just got this look in their eye and said... I really want to be a part of that. And lo and behold, they became a part of it. And the work from that task force has translated into Ray being named to this new position. And I think there are a lot of really good things uh, that are going to be coming down the pipeline with, you know, both NAEA's focus on equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also having Ray in that position. I I think they're going to do great. But I am very excited for the opportunity to talk to Ray about all of that. So let me bring them on now. Ray Yang is joining me now. Ray, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Tim. How are you? I am doing well. Uh, we have a lot of big things, a lot of important things to to talk about today. But um, to start with, uh, I would love you to just introduce yourself. Uh, can you tell people a little bit about yourself, uh, what you've done as an art educator, anything else you want to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, my name is Ray Yang. Um, I use they, them pronouns I'll mention, and I'm also, and my current role is as the Director of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion and Special Initiatives for the National Art Education Association, so NAEA. Um, I live in Seattle, Washington, so I actually work remotely. NAEA's headquarters is in Alexandria, Virginia, mm-hmm. um, and I've been an art educator for about I mean, like it's it's wild to think about it for about like twenty plus years. Wow, I've been yeah. doing this work, and so yeah. um, ever since grad school, I grew up on the East Coast. Uh, but I did my graduate work at the School of the Art Institute, in Chicago, um, and I've had a career which has really spanned uh, just about I think every single kind of um, arena that arts education includes. So worked in museums, worked as a teaching artist, done community arts education work, uh, teacher professional development training, artist professional development work, uh, worked as an administrator in public schools, in Chicago public schools. Um, I've taught in graduate school, um, taught graduate courses. Uh, I've been a classroom teacher, so at an independent school, taught middle and uh, high school students. Worked at the more more recently worked at the Seattle Art Museum doing some teaching artist work, so a little bit of everything. Um, and throughout all of that too, also always been thinking about issues of equity and diversity within my arts education teaching work. So a little bit of everything, I think, kind of throughout my time. Yeah, for sure. It's been uh, it's been an impressive career. Uh, we'll yeah. we'll say that. Um, now you and I worked together a while back uh, when you spent some time working at uh, Art of Education. So yeah. yep. uh, 
I, so I got to know you there. And now, you know, when I saw that you were named as the, the director of equity, diversity, and inclusion, I, I don't remember the full super long time. No worries, no. uh, you know, I just thought to myself, this is a perfect fit for you. Um, so can you talk a little bit, I guess, about how the position came about and, and why you thought it was a good fit for you, why this job is, you know, aligns with your passions and, and what you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the equity, diversity, and inclusion work has been happening for a while at NAEA. And, you know, um, there have been some really awesome people who've been shepherding this work throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'd say it really started picking up steam um, maybe like four or five years ago now. So um, a couple of folks who were instrumental in this work were uh, Wanda Knight, who is actually going to be, she's the president-elect of NAEA, mm-hmm. as well as... Uh, uh, James Rawling, who is the current president right. of N- NAEA. And so they were both involved with the initial um, EDNI task force, which was created uh, several years ago. And I, I kind of think of that as like one of the initial um, sort of major initiatives that NA was, NAEA was doing to really look at um, where the organization stood around these kinds of issues. And so they gathered a group of, I think it was about 20 people, from around the country, I was actually part of that initial task force, and mm-hmm. um, so there were several meetings where we were looking at NAEA, kind of taking a hard look and a really critical look at the organization. And from that work was created a set of recommendations, about sixteen recommendations um, for the organization, and those are still kind of the giving them as the guiding star for this work within the organization. Uh, the first recommendation was actually a creating a, a standing commission for EDNI work, uh, which was done very quickly. So there's actually a group of uh, the EDNI commission um, is a group that is um, selected. And there are, I believe it's it eight commissioners. I should know this number <laughs> off the top of my head. But, um, who uh, they represent all the different divisions. And then there are also a couple of at large who help to guide the equity, diversity, inclusion work. And then the last recommendation was actually the creation of a staff position that manages equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives for the organization. And that um, really uh, um, came into focus when uh, Mario Rosero, who is the current executive director for NAEA, um, took charge. And he has been, he's amazing, has been instrumental in like pushing that work. It's, it's something that he's passionate about as well. And so he created the director of EDNI at NAEA. Um, and so this role is actually only about three and a half months old now at this point. So it's still fairly new, you know, it did yeah, not exist yeah. before. Uh, and when it came around, um, I was excited because I was like, first of all, to the fact that like this was happening, right? This right, is a recommendation right. that the group had created. Like it's, it's exciting to see that that actually was moving. Um, and then secondly, this is just something that, um, like you said, like this is something I'm passionate about. This is something I've always, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this within my teaching, within my work. Uh, you know, since since grad school, since, you know, very far, you know, back uh, early on and um, something that I'm continuing to be excited about. And, um, you know, I'll be real, really honest. And when I say that, like, I only I also I also felt confident that this work would mean something. It would actually have an impact based on where the leadership is now, based on folks like Wanda and James and Mario, mm-hmm. because I, I think you can have a director of EDI and I, but nothing happens, but you right. have to have that leadership support in order to really push this. And so, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, when it came around, I was excited. I want, you know, put my name into that and, uh, and was lucky enough to be selected for the role. All right. So now that you're in this position, you've been there uh, a few months, can you talk about some of your goals? Like, what do you want to accomplish or what does NAEA at large want to accomplish when it comes to equity, diversity, and inclusion? Um, Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, You know, uh, in a lot of ways, the goals are really... um, They're they're, they're based along upon what the... um, what our membership wants, right? We've heard from our membership that this is important to them, that this really matters, and this is something that they want to uh, have happening. And so, um, you know, we're looking at ways that, like, uh, NAEA policies need to be reexamined and rebuilt and, like, you know, considering 
and how do we consider uh, issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion within that? We're looking at a lot of communication because I think one of the major issues with equity, diversity, and inclusion work right now is that uh, folks don't always have a clear idea of what that means or what it right. is. And also there's a lot of stuff out there in the world, which I think unfortunately really casts equity and diversity and inclusion work as as a negative, right? Like mm-hmm. it started to flip it on its head because as we know, there are folks who, um, uh, you know, just to, you know, I'll be, to put it politely, like they're very opposed yeah. <laughs> to this work moving yeah. forward or, um, or, you know, um, just, just are resistant to it. And so how can we as an organization serve our membership in a way that we can help clarify, help really kind of show why this work is so urgent, why it's so important, and how can we do that in a way that is also thinking about um, keeping everybody in the conversation? Um, <clears throat> I think one of the things about this job is that, which, you know, to be really frank, is a, also a challenge for me sometimes is like, I have to be very much like, not exactly neutral, but I have to like, I'm pushing the work, but also mm-hmm. trying to keep people in the conversation. You know, I think yes, folks have yes. uh, different ways of thinking about equity, diversity, and inclusion work. You know, sometimes it's like, uh, the train is going, I'm getting on the train. And if we leave some folks behind, like, I'm really sorry, but like, we got to go. Right. Others is, you know, like we've got to k- hold the doors, you know, we've got to keep these doors open so we can get as many people onto the train as possible. And so there's this kind of balance that I'm trying to play between like keeping those doors open. Cause I want to get as many people as possible, but that we don't stay here in the same spot, you know, on and on, which I think is actually a, a fair critique of uh, Edie and I work is that, Sometimes there's a lot of talk, but not a lot of action. Mm-hmm. So how are we making sure that there is action? So communication, I think it's building the capacity and skills of our membership. And that's through um, dialogue and conversation about these things, uh, building the capacity for folks to um, deal with work that's things that are uncomfortable, things that are not going to be easy conversations. We know that that's part of what, um, you know, what, ED and I work is, and also creating resources. And so I'll talk a little bit bit in a second about some of the resources, but uh, how do we um, provide concrete, you know, whether that's lessons in curricula, whether that's um, strategies for conversation, whether that's links to like um, other podcasts, things that like, you know, you know, even things that like Art of Ed has done, which I think are really great. I think I've seen a lot of really, I was really impressed with the, uh, um, the CRT, yeah, that yeah, you all just, put out there, you know, talk about ago. that, yep. you know, stuff like that. That's really great. And so, how can we link and share to like things like that, which I think are essential? Yeah, that's that's very true. And I, like you said, I, I think there's a lot out there, but we we do need to figure out, you know, how people can access that stuff, how they can get started. Um, but yeah, can I ask you about some specifics? Um, you know, yeah. you're talking about wanting to take action. Like, do you have any initiatives or specific plans that you can share? Can you talk about some things that you are going to be working on in the coming months? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the major th- pieces that we're going to do is we are going to launch a uh, state EDNI liaison role. And so mm. what we're looking to create is a position that works with the state art ed associations. So every state um, who will be essentially a conduit, um, kind of two-way conduit, um, can um, will be in close communication with me to talk about the priorities that NAEA has created, but also then letting us know what the specific needs and priorities are for their individual states. Um, ED and I work, I think is important. Like a couple things to really think about is that like, number one, it's not the work of just one person. It's not owned by one person. This is the kind of work that doesn't get done unless we all do it together. So it has to be collaborative. Number two, it's not a one size fits all. Everyone's at a different place in their journey. And so trying to create like a, giant plan that we say every state needs to do this and meet this and that that's not going to work and so Mm -hmm. how can we really meet the states where they are just like you know this is i think um we talk about teaching pedagogy it's not so different right when we're in a classroom we got to meet kids where they are like not every kid comes in with the same level of skill as an artist and so um you know to expect every kid to be painting you know doing oil painting is not like you know like (laughs) the first thing when they're not even they haven't had a basic background in like you know like um, the elements. And so, you know, how can we work with the states to think about where they are? And so that state liaison role is going to be essential for that. There's going to be a series of trainings that we'll do with those individuals. Um, they will be able to help create their own state EDNI teams. Um, 
And so we're going to provide resources and there'll be a kind of back and forth relationship. And so we really see that as building our network mm -hmm. um, in order to expand this EDNI work. That's one of the major things we have happening. That's going to be rolling out very soon. Um, and I'm excited for that. Um, we've been doing, we're also working on something called, it's going to be called, it's going to be called the hub right now. Okay. It is our yeah. uh, resource repository where we will be able to take um, thing, resources that have been done around equity, diversity, and inclusion with an NAEA and store them there. And that includes um, looking at creating our own, uh, potentially our own like podcast or video cast series that like mm -hmm. we'll have some of these conversations, bringing folks in who are talking about these topics um, links to online resources, sharing, um, and, and this is a lot of this work is generated by our EDNI commission, but, um, sharing articles, writing that they have around these topics. Um, so that's going to be very much a space that we can kind of gather resources and hold and, and be able to share with folks. Yeah. Um, and that's in process right now. We're hoping to have that up soon and definitely, you know, before the convention in March, but um, be able to share that with people. Um, and then, you know, the last piece I'll say is that we've been doing, we've had a, been lucky enough to have this, uh, a grant through the NEA over the last few years where we've been doing a lot of cultural competency training work and mm -hmm. started developing yeah. some models, which I think are doing some really great work, uh, kind of a train the trainer model piece where we are working with a group of, uh, arts educators and then they've been doing trainings. Uh, they most recently did that at the, uh, state leadership, um, regional meetings that happened uh, this past summer and did um, some cultural competency work with the, uh, the folks who were at those meetings. And so we're looking to expand that. And that'll probably be part of the state EDI li liaison work too, but um, it's sort of a professional development and a leadership component kind of coming together and, and building. So those are some of the, the big things that we have coming up. And, you know, I mean, and there's other stuff, too, that we're excited for. The commission is, is hard at work trying to put together a lot of these pieces. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And that is a lot to look forward to. All right. Uh, I have two more questions for you. One is mm -hmm. more big picture. One is very, like, small focus. But um, sure. big picture wise, you know, when we look at, you know, the ranks of art educators, when we look at ourselves as a whole, um, it's clear, at least to me, that we have some work to do when it comes to diversity in our ranks. So like, is that a goal for you or for NAEA? Like, where do you begin with, with something like that, trying to diversify the ranks of art teachers that are out there? Um, I, I think it's actually one of the most important questions because I think if we talk about, you know, the field, um, you know, I appreciate you, you know, talk about that. We, we know that that's work that needs to be done and it's mm -hmm. so important and essential. Um, it is a it is a goal for me, of course. It's a goal for NAEA. It's within the recommendations from the um, EDNI task force to look at the diversity of the field and how do we grow, re re uh, recruit, and retain uh, those individuals for us. So um, right now we're talking about um, a couple different strategies. There um, at the most last it started last year and will continue to move forward is that we had a uh, EDNI scholarship. That was specifically, you know, really looking at like BIPOC folks and trying to encourage them to be able to attend the convention. And so like looking at costs and how do we alleviate that cost? So there were scholarships mm -hmm. built there. Um, we have continued to engage with that group and we're trying to like build them as a cohort to do some more work as as leaders in the field. And so that's part of a, a leadership and mentorship development piece that we see as being really essential. And we several of our commissioners are really passionate and excited for that work because um, you know, you can, you know, encourage people to come in the field all you want, but also how do you keep them? How do you, right. how do you, uh, right. how do you keep them and grow them? Um, you know, folks like, um, James and Wanda as the president and president elect, they've done an amazing job of actually being mentors to a lot of these, uh, types of individuals and like, you know, um, and so they've paved the way and they're making sure that others are able to follow them in that path. So, um, Mentorship and leadership training is something that we really are looking at. Um, another element is actually at the convention this year, uh, we're going to create some cultural identity and affinity spaces um, for folks. Because um, we want to really look at, again, like how do we, um, when you go to the convention, you know, and you look around, um, if you're not um, 
you know, if you're not someone who's white, you often don't see a lot of faces mm -hmm. that are like yours. And, you know, that's just being really honest within like this context. Right. And that's not like putting down any of the people who are there. I'm excited. I love, you know, that there we have a convention where we're able to bring all these amazing art educators together. But for those um, underrepresented groups, how do we create spaces for them to connect with others and also build their own power? And so creating these cultural identity group spaces will help to do that. And so, um, and we're not talking just racial identity groups, but the um, uh, racial identity, uh, we're looking at uh, gender and sexuality, uh, disability. Um, and so we want to start to build some of those spaces. This is a first kind of crack at it. We're going to create a space and like, um, build where they can just connect and talk to each other and then hopefully grow that throughout the year because these are also just a start this is just a beginning to that kind of work uh you can't just end it like make the space and be like yay we're done you know <laughs> yes uh Edie and i work never ends it's it's ongoing and so uh the those spaces will be a start to help to um hopefully i'm, I'm hoping to address some of those um some of the lack of uh, diversity that we have yeah, that sounds that sounds really promising. Um, then the last thing I wanted to ask you, I guess, just advice uh, for you for for people who are interested in this topic. Like, what what do you say for for people who are interested in doing you know equity, diversity, and inclusion work, but they don't know where to start. They don't know how to begin. Like, what can they do you know in their own circles, in their own classrooms to to get started with this type of work? Um, again, excellent question. Um, I, we actually do have, uh, an NAEA resource called the, uh, getting started with EDNI. It's a part of our toolkits. Uh, so that's online now. And it's a great document that, um, uh, it actually was created before I even started. So like, you know, okay. again, NAEA looking and, and thinking about this work, but, um, Mario, uh, was working with the EDNI commission to draft these, um, this kind of getting started toolkit. And so that's available on our website. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's important just to start uh, taking, doing some reflection. I don't think there's enough reflection being done uh, uh, in general in the field. And so um, when we take a look at our own teaching in the classroom, um, you know, who, who are the artists that we're elevating? Who are the artists that, you know, kids are seeing? Um, are they reflective of the population of students that you, that you're teaching? And even if that, you know, and even if not, like, you know, um, one of the things I used to do in my classroom is I really very consciously was showing, uh, women artists and artists of color. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, if I was showing any kinds of exemplars or like, you know, artists to relate to the work we were doing because they weren't represented or they weren't seen enough. I looked at the posters that I had in my classroom and, um, you know, I was always trying to share and put up posters of, again, artists who are not part of the canon, who, you know, who, um, who just looked, you know, who, who, who were able to bring some diversity to the field. And so, um, as a teacher, like, you know, I think that's a great place to start. Who are the artists you're showing? Who are the artists you're like sharing with students? Um, and then starting to like move into like, I, one of the th the biggest challenges I think right now that we're encountering is that in the field, broadly, um, in education, there's this attack on like um, being able to teach equity and diversity work, right? We know that there's mm -hmm. legislation in some states where like yeah. that's happening. And um, essentially, you know, like CRT is the kind of like the boogeyman of like <laughs> language <laughs> they use. But like right. when you look, further down it's actually like they're talking about not being able to teach about like identity and race mm -hmm. and like i think you know our teachers are one of the, you know they teach that's that's a core part of what we teach when we're asking Absolutely. students to express themselves they're teaching yeah. about who they are and like they're expressing themselves through their identity right there's obviously technical skill other things that come into it but like their ideas come from who they are and so um how can we you know make sure that those classroom teachers are still able to do that. And how can we make sure that they're still feeling comfortable encouraging their students to express themselves in that way? And so, you know, I would say like, you know, as a teacher, you know, are you, are you encouraging your students to like ask questions and express themselves and like really kind of not necessarily shy away from diff difficult conversations and topics, but like, you know, I think what, like, 
when students are able to create work that spurs dialogue and conversation and like comes from who they are, that's when I feel like I'm most successful. And I think a lot of teachers would agree. And so um, are you doing that? It's hard. It's challenging in a way that I think is, you know, um, amplified more now than ever. And mm-hmm. so hopefully what the, some of the work that we're doing within NAEA and my work as the director of EDNI will help to like support teachers in that and also find ways for them to address that. But, um, but do that work in your own classroom. And actually I would also encourage folks to also ask questions about for themselves, like do their own reflecting. Like um, if we can be open-minded and really think about like ask questions, like did something I do was something I, that I did insensitive or not thinking about this or not in, being inclusive um, and not get defensive around that. Like, you know, we can all grow because yep. then we can kind of like, you know, build classrooms that are going to support all of our students and elevate all of our students. Yeah. Very well said. All right. Well, we will go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, Ray, thank you so much for giving us the time. Thank you so much for the conversation. I appreciate it. And uh, you've given us uh, a lot to look forward to uh, in the coming months from NIEA. So thank you for all that. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. As I just said to Ray, uh, there is a lot to look forward to and also a lot to think about. And one thought, one idea that I kept coming back to as we were talking was the train analogy that Ray used. You know, I really appreciate that analogy and I know that balance is difficult because so many people want to move, 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 but you also want to get as many people to come along as possible. So, you know, the question is, how do you find that balance? You know, I I know they want to help everyone get on board, but they also need to keep from getting bogged down, keep from just having the wheels spinning as you continue to talk about things. But my impression from our discussion today is that this ED&I work is not just talk. You know, they're not going to be just spinning their wheels. They're going to be doing the work. You know, there are specific goals, specific initiatives, and Ray seems to have a clear vision for what they want to accomplish. You know, there are resources being created. There are concrete takeaways for teachers and for people who want to do the work. Uh, I will link to a couple of things that Ray shared, including that getting started with EDNI document from NAEA that people can check out, uh, find the show notes in order to find those. I will also link to the CRT article from Jenny Drummond that uh, we discussed briefly because I think it's uh, a good one that is worth reading. But all that being said, Uh, I just want to send a big thank you to Ray for coming on. I appreciate that they are taking on a challenging role, and I appreciate that there's a lot of work to do. And right now, there's no roadmap on on how to do it. This is something that NAEA has never done before, or at least I have not seen it from them. And I'm glad that that they are taking it on in a, a real and serious way. But... Whatever comes of it, whatever the results are of this work, um, I think it's worth uh, just one final thought here. I just want to leave you with with something that Ray said when they were talking about some of the new work that's getting started and how we try to get everyone on board. Uh, They said, this work doesn't get done unless we all do it together. So like Ray recommended, and like I say far too often at the end of this podcast, I would encourage you to take some time to reflect uh, on you know what you're doing in your own classroom, uh, what you want to be doing, what you can get better at, and how you might want to be a part of this work. Art Ed Radio is produced by the Art of Education University with audio engineering from Michael Crawford. Thank you, as always, for listening, and we will talk to you next week.